Hello everybody and welcome to Jeff the Pharmacist. It is an honor to have you guys here uh, watching. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, Soliqua. So Soliqua is a uh, once daily injection. It's a subcutaneous injection which means it goes under the skin and it is a combination product of two different medications. So even though it's just one pen called Soliqua, there are two active chemicals in there that are affecting um, the, dia the, the body of a person with type 2 diabetes. So the first product in there is called Insulin Glargine. Uh, that's also sold under the brand name of Lantus. And uh, Lixisentide, which is a GLP-1 uh, agonist. So you have insulin, long-acting insulin, and uh, a GLP-1 agonist. So uh, insulin is a hormone that the pancreas produces naturally and uh, just kind of a quick and dirty on insulin. The only differences between all of the insulins are that they uh, are is how they're released. So the amount that is released from the fatty tissue into the bloodstream uh, is different for each different product. So uh, they're basically engineered to to release a certain amount of insulin from the fatty tissue uh, over time. So Insulin glargine is called a basal insulin, which means that has kind of a smooth uh, release from the fatty tissue uh, over a over a day. It's it's usually given once a day, and that that helps um, lower the amount of uh, sugar in one's blood, kind of in a smooth fashion. Some insulins are given around meal time, so they're given to combat that spike in glucose that people will have if they're on a traditional diet, a traditional. Um, my plate uh, American diet and um, a, so so insulin is just a hormone produced from the pancreas and you know what it does is it takes uh, glucose that's in the blood and it puts it into the liver it puts it into your muscle tissue and um, most prominently it actually stores sugar as fat so uh, insulin can cause weight gain for that reason and the other product is lixisentide. That's a GLP-1 um, GLP agonist. Now I've talked about GLP-1 agonists before. Uh, other products are Bietta, Trulicity, Saxenda, which is actually uh, not even marketed as a diabetes drug. It's marketed as a weight loss drug. So GLP-1 agonists work primarily by uh, increasing the amount of insulin that the pancreas produces. So they work on people that have a, a somewhat functioning pancreas. And so if so the, the hormone signals the pancreas to release insulin, but it, it does it in such a way that it is um, responsive to the amount of glucose that is in the bloodstream. So if somebody has a higher amount of blood sugar, uh, more insulin uh, should be released from the pancreas in response to this GLP-1 agonist, uh, lixisentide. So along with that, there's another thing that occurs called delayed gastric emptying. So delayed gastric emptying um, basically uh, means that the food stays in the stomach longer and that's why some people on some products like Trulicity, Bietta, Victoza, they all experienced, uh, they might experience some, um, some weight loss because people feel fuller because the food stays in the stomach longer. Um, but that's also connect connected to some side effects like nausea and diarrhea. So Soliqua is a, a once daily injection. Um, it's dosed according to uh, an, an algorithm. So uh, Sanofi looked at Soliqua compared to in people that were already, that were taking insulin glargine. So the dosing algorithm is based on how much insulin somebody's taking, how much basal insulin someone is taking. And I won't go too much into that. It's basically just an algorithm. Like if you're taking 30 units of insulin glargine or Lantus, they recommend people starting out at 15 units of Soliqua. But it's basically an algorithm. And there are some parameters on increasing and decreasing the dose um, based on uh, how, how a person is responding to the medication. In patients inadequately controlled on less than 30 units of basal insulin, the starting dose is uh, 15 units. In patients inadequately controlled on 30 to 60 units of basal insulin, the starting dose is 30 units. And then the maximum 
daily dosage is 60 units. So that's basically what they studied. Um, so um, basically what the, pro what, the, what the promise of the drug is, I put that in air quotes just because this is what they studied and what they're saying that the medication can do. So uh, they took the drug over 30 weeks uh, compared to uh, insulin glargine or lantus by itself. So they took patients that were taking, uh, that were started on just basal insulin and they compared it to Soliqua. Uh, and so they found that patients that were on basal insulin, 100 units, had their A1C drop from an average of 8.1 to uh, 7.5. And patients that were on the Soliqua 100, it went from 8.1 to 1.1. Now, I don't think it's that remarkable because Soliqua is two different drugs. Um, so it's just measuring insulin. I mean, you could, you could probably do the same thing with insulin and insulin plus metformin or insulin plus glyburide. So of course there's a lot of side effects. So hypoglycemia is an issue with, um, with any kind of, in, of an insulin. So Soliqua has insulin in it. So hypoglycemia um, can be an issue. Um, hypoglycemia is the most dangerous thing that can occur with any diabetes medication. Um, besides some um, really rare things that sometimes occur, but hypoglycemia is extremely dangerous. Um, people die from it all the time, so hypoglycemia is very serious, and that's obviously any kind of insulin can cause that because insulin works directly by lowering your, uh, your blood glucose. And so I just wanted to show you kind of how, how much hypoglycemia was there um, so there was plenty of system, there's, there was plenty of sim, symptomatic hypoglycemia, which I would expect, but it was a, you know, a serious issue, um, symptomatic hypoglycemia. And you can see here on the chart, um, with Soliqua 100, 25% of patients had some symptomatic hypoglycemia, um, in, in study A, and there was another study, study B, where it was 40%, it was even, it was even higher. Um, severe hypoglycemia was lower. Um, so symptomatic means basically that the patient um, could self-report that they had hypoglycemia. Uh, severe was more of an emergency, it required someone else's help, and that's very serious, obviously. Obviously it was lower, but it was still an issue uh, in study B. So pancreatitis was an issue with lexicentide, one of the components of Soliqua. Uh, so there was uh, 21 cases of patients on, with, that took that drug that developed pancreatitis um, versus the comparator arm. There was only uh, 14 cases. Um, so pancreatitis can be an issue with any of these uh, GLP-1 agonists and it is something to, um, to keep in mind. Uh, GLP-1 agonists, uh, like Soliqua can cause can cause uh, kidney dysfunction and that occurs through dehydration. So as I said before, the uh, GLP-1 agonist calls, cause something called delayed gastric emptying, meaning that the stomach doesn't empty out its contents uh, as quickly as it would normally and that can actually cause nausea and nausea can lead to dehydration uh, and vomiting and that can uh, actually cause kidney injury because the kidney needs to be flushed with water um, pretty constantly. Basically the kidneys um, need to be wet and they need to continue to flush all the dirty nasty stuff that that collects in the kidneys out through the urine. There's kind of a weird side effect that occurs called immunogenicity. Im immunogenicity is a uh, basically the the body develops antibodies to the GLP-1 agonist, the lexicentide, and will actually fight the medication and destroy it, reducing how effective it is. So it's kind of a it's kind of a a side effect that can be costly. You can imagine you're injecting something into your body and it's not doing anything and you know, you're paying a lot of money for it and you're basically just destroying it with your body. And people that take lexicentide develop antibodies. Uh, most people develop antibodies. So people with more antibodies than other people will have, a less, will have less efficacy, will be less effective. And I haven't been able to kind of find out what, what is the effect on 
people's native GLP-1 hormone, does it kill that as well? And I know that some of these antibodies will also test positive against people's negative GLP-1 hormone, but I never see, uh, I haven't been able to find any studies that determine if that, if there's a negative effect um, from antibodies that are attacking its own GLP-1 hormone. And in, any insulin containing products can cause uh, low potassium levels, so that is something that is a concern with anything, any insulin. And you'll see a lot of people that have, um, that are taking insulin, they'll have to take potassium supplements to keep their potassium levels um, in a normal range. And lastly, I just want to talk about um, anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis can occur with any medication that's basically just an allergic reaction, but it can be extremely dangerous and cause you know, mouth and throat swelling and difficulty breathing, and that can occur with any um, medication, but it's important to, uh, to know about it at least, and it is an emergency. So I wanna thank you guys for watching Jeff the Pharmacist. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, um, and please subscribe, it would be great to have you. Um, it would be great to have you as part of the, uh, as part of the channel. I wanna thank you guys for watching, thanks a lot.